I seen a gnome. It was right in town, actually. I was leaving our little health food market, and near my parking spot was a tree with the bark off of one side of it. The bark was missing from that side, about two feet high, and sort of shaped like a rough door, although there was no opening. Just the bark missing. As I rounded the tree, there standing in front of the door was a little man, about two feet tall. I only saw him for a moment, and then he was gone. He was just standing there, all dressed in brown with a hat that didn't point up high, but slung back over his head in a low point. His hands were on his hips and one foot in front of the other, looking out across the street towards a very large open space, as if proudly surveying his land. From that day forward, whenever I visited the health food store, I always brought a cookie and left it for him by the door. I never saw him again, and quite a few years later, that tree was taken down. I was so sad. I'll never forget it, and I consider it a gift that he allowed me to see him for just that moment. My sister and two friends saw a troll-looking creature when they were about 14. They were walking along a tree-lined path. They heard rustling noise and turned around and stood in the middle of the path was a short, round, white, gray skinned man. He had pointed ears and he cackled when they saw him. They ran for their lives and didn't look back. I have asked if they've been drinking or doing anything, but apparently not. She's nearly 40 now and still stands by her account of events. In the late 70s, when I was a teenager, I grew up in Ohio. Then I had one come next to our house at night and look through my window. It was summer and I had the window open. It was a full moon. It grunted and it woke me up. Also, my dog started to bark at it. I could make out the outline and it was about seven feet tall, no neck and very hairy. Its eyes were a blazing red. I thought it was someone trying to scare me in an ape suit. I heard my dad snoring in his room. I realized the back door was unlocked. I ran to lock the door and grabbed my shotgun, loaded it with rifle slugs used for deer hunting. When I chambered around, it woke my dad. Our border collie was growling and barking. Our beagles were barking. I looked out the kitchen window and saw the squatch walking through the hayfield that was about 10 to 15 feet behind our house. It kept walking and disappeared into the woods at the edge of our dairy farm. My dad said, what the hell was that? I replied, I think we just saw a Bigfoot. Checked the next day for tracks, but couldn't find any. Also looked for hair, but there wasn't any. You could see the trail it left through the hayfield and into the woods. It was around 1986 that the Bigfoot was looking through the window. I never want to be that close to one again. 40 years ago, I was playing with a juvenile in a creek while my grandpa was picking watermelons and cantaloupes. A freak electrical storm came out of nowhere and my grandpa grabbed me up really quick. He yelled a very loud profanity, GD, what is that? And we've never been back. He drank himself to death many years later. One of my work buddies was traveling to his father's place on the reserve, and when he got there, it was nighttime, and when he was turning on his headlights, was looked like a human in furs with antlers standing at the bottom of the approach. I remember I was in the back seat of the car and my mom and stepdad were up front. I was looking at the moon and I noticed some movement in a field. So I just kept watching and every clearing there was a wolf-like creature running like a man in the field keeping pace with our car and we were on the highway. That memory chills me to the bone. 
I used to have some tweaker neighbors that saw shadow people all the time. I always thought it because they were high on methamphetamine. In fact, it seems to be a meth user thing to see the shadow folk. Weird. Maybe the drug opens the door for these encounters. A skyrod fairy showed up in my Garden of Eden, Florida hiking video. I remember my brother telling me about a kill site about 400 feet behind his backyard. Blood was splattered everywhere for about 30 feet. Neither of us could imagine what have caused this. No wolves or grizzlies. I did have Sasquatch living in my yard for many years. There was a young one living in a huge ivy covered maple during the day. The parents came around late at night. I lived about five miles away as the crow flies from my brother's house. We grew up within a few miles from where we raised families. I leaned towards Sasquatch looking out for my brother's children and likely mine too. Perhaps there was this cougar stalking his kids. Can't say for sure. I know I made a few friends back then. One was only three feet tall, Barry, when I met him. His parents lived somewhere in between my brother's house and mine at the time. Barry was probably seven feet tall by now, maybe bigger. The last time I saw him, he was about six feet tall and as agile as a cougar. He literally smiled at me and bound away like a cougar would have. Gotta be hearing gunshots in the middle of the night while camping. On two separate occasions, this has happened. Once, the campgrounds were full. After the gunshots, there was two Bigfoot that came close, screaming and knocking. All you heard were tent zippers and car doors slamming and people bailing out of there very quickly. The next time, it was just myself and my daughter. There was one other camper within our sight. This time, the Bigfoot came up the ridge and straight to our tent. He walked around the tent, stopping at each window. Next morning, we stopped to ask the guy if he heard anything. He went pale when he saw us, said he swore some guy was walking around his tent, but saw we were two small females and asked, what the hell was that? Had an alien grab the loose part of my pajamas when trying to get away from them on my bike when I was six. The whole night was so disturbing. I buried it for 50 years and just recently in 2017 started looking into hypnotic regression. Then again, a cognizant event in 1975 woke up outside. With UFO interaction came shadow person terrifying interactions. Had a smoke orb floating above my house while reading Astral Dynamics. A couple weeks later, I had a demonic spider run up my body, followed by an astral trip to hell. A few weeks after that, my then wife walked into a ghost party in our living room the night of our landlord's brother passed away. In 1993, I was visited by an actual man in black outside of my house. White skin, no hair, sitting in the driver's seat of a pristine 1960s Cadillac with red leather interior and a noticeable violet glow coming from the front passenger seat. I have thought I imagined it before my friends in the house saw it too. He was looking back over his left shoulder as he pulled into traffic and never looked forward. I'll admit, that really freaked me out. Back in 1996 or so, while driving in the desert near my hometown, Sparks, Nevada, we came across a circle of lights that I knew good and well have never been there before. I stopped as we decided what to do. Then. In an area where livestock doesn't usually hang out, we were suddenly surrounded by hundreds of cows. Remember, this is the northern Nevada desert, not really cow country. 
So we split. Came back the next day during daytime. No cows, no circle, just desert. To this day, we have no idea what we saw. This area is now a housing development. I had a Bigfoot encounter in 1977 in Michigan. My sister, myself, and our two dogs saw this hairy monster. Bigfoot wasn't part of our vocabulary back then. It left the woods about 25 yards away from us. My dogs went berserk and I had to grab their collars. It walked from right to left, crossing the road in front of us. It did stop in the middle of the road and turned its upper torso and head to look at us, then just kept walking. We were crying and ran to a neighbor's house to get them to take a look at this monster. Didn't look for anything, and the neighbors didn't believe us. This was around midday and sunny. I will literally never forget it. Last fall, my girlfriend and I saw one in the bush by Mackenzie, British Columbia. I never believe until that day, from 20 feet away for about 4 seconds before it ran off. It scared the F out of us. The woods will never feel the same for me. I have one from 2007, end of summer, near the Cowichan River. A friend and I went to drink, enjoying the evening by the river, and as it was turning dusk, we heard branches breaking, as if it was a bear or an elk was coming through the brush. It was quite a bit, and we started yelling, hey, to let the animal know we were here. The noise stopped, and we looked towards it, saw a huge silhouette, must have been 10 feet, between trees, wide shoulders, very dark colored. We ran towards the car parked at the roadside, honking the horn on the fob, but didn't see. Couldn't hear above the honks. Anything moving away. We got in the car, drove the short distance to my friend's house, told her partner about it, and realized we left our six pack down on the riverbank. So we went back, armed with flashlights. No sign of anything, and our beer was untouched. Needless to say, we grabbed it and went back to her house. Had an encounter while deer hunting just outside Lake City, out past the airport. Osceola, WMA. So I know they're there. Been stalked by three Sasquatch outside a little store at Loon Lake Lodge Resort in the summer of 2019. I noticed them after I started hearing weird noises and started to check my surroundings. I was stuck outside the store for two hours because of how horrified I was. I had no signal, but I was using the store's free Wi-Fi so I was able to get back to my relative that rented it out. It always made me feel conscious of the surroundings whenever I go in the woods. Years ago, I was riding in Suburban with five adults and two children. We were in western Colorado coming back from fly fishing. Driving along the river, we saw a black lab playing with a white fox, like dog. It was beautiful to watch. They were playing like a dance. Poof, it was gone from like thin air. The two kids, I was 20 years old, are the only ones that saw it. The adults didn't see the white dog, only the lab. Until this day, the two kids and I know what we saw, and the adults have actually shamed us for believing what we've seen. My sister and I seen a black wolf-looking creature on two legs a year ago east of Parkerfield, before Camp Horizon. It was really weird. As a hunter and growing up hunting in Arkansas, definitely have seen a lot of weird things. Shadow figures while going around in the woods or heading back to the truck seem to be the most common. My grandpa Lewis used to carry the clock 
at Dixie, Portland back in the 70s and 80s during the night shift. He was always the only one there. He would tell me there's all kinds of figures and sounds that would come from inside those buildings and even outside, all around those areas. We literally hear a woman screaming for help at night. Sounds like she's in our yard, next yard over, and we go out there, and there's nothing, no one. Also hear growling, it's creepy, and it scares the dogs. It sets off security lights. We see nothing, but we can hear it outside. That's just two things. We hear and see weird stuff all the time, and we're in town. My grandfather swore he saw a UFO when he was coyote hunting late at night south of town. One day, a buddy and I were looking through windows at the old hospital. We were like in 6th or 7th grade. We saw a cart moving by itself and seen two or three random faces in the windows. Every time I've gotten near there since, I've gotten chills and a bad feeling deep in my body. We were four miles east of AC and I spotted a mountain lion going through our property three times in one week. Also during that time, heard crazy women's screams at night, which they say those are the cats also. Yesterday, my bow hunting partner parked his truck to walk into his tree stand. As he began the hike, a huge scream came from the timber. After a lifetime of hunting and guiding hunters, my friend is no stranger to the sounds animals can make in the woods. This was so loud it pierced his soul. He figured the tree stand would be the safest refuge, so he hurried down the trail to a stand. The yells did not stop, and they were accompanied by the breaking of large limbs and branches. Once up in the tree, the creature began to circle him. Trees began to thrash back and forth violently as it continued to terrify him. In over 50 years in the woods, it's the first time he's been scared. The walk back to the truck was fearful, but it let him go. His story moved me from, I want Bigfoot to be real, to, oh my God, it's really out there. This occurred in the Cascade Range in the Oregon Mountains. One morning, just before daylight, I was just feet from my ground blind and something growled at me like I've never heard before. The growl hit my back, jarred my back, chest, heart, and the hair on the back of my neck stood straight up. I had one small cell flashlight, but it only shined about eight feet. I stayed right there till daylight and got out of there. I never went back. I've had more than a hundred encounters. I was around them for years. I've been so desensitized, other person characteristics, the way they look and their behaviors, they're pretty scary looking at first, but you soon learn to see the beauty in all of them, especially when you get to see how powerful they really are. All the while, they are so docile as your own shadow. Felt something paralleling me while hiking at Cade's Cove. I live in East Tennessee, and my parents' property offers the benefit of a pond that's nestled in the back part of a field surrounded by woods, and a small cornfield is next to it. Often my dad's corn gets laid out flat in a small circular type pattern as something is strategically laying down on it. Black hair is often found in the barbed wire fence, which my dad felt it was bear hair. That's why I'm out of there before dark. Never know what else could be lurking. I heard a family of Bigfoot. The first and only time I drove down myself hours to the Olympic National Forest. The first and only place I stopped. They were up and downstream from me. I listened for 25 minutes or more. As if I left my house and drove straight to them. 
Interestingly, there have been times I've had these beings shake trees to let me know they were there. On two occasions, I have been blasted by a whoop as I was driving. On the first occasion, the closest cover was about 300 yards across an open cow pasture. It felt like it screamed in my ear from six inches away, like a foghorn in intensity, yet it had to be at least 300 yards away. This was broad daylight south of Mountain Grove, Missouri on Highway 95. The other one was right off the Interstate 44 alongside the Gasconade River. A friend who researches on his own and collects reports when I told him that the second incident applied the day before he had been less than a mile from there checking out some footprints in a cedar tree about six inches in diameter that had been broken off and six feet pulled up out of the ground and embedded in the ground about two feet straight down. On this occasion, it was after dark. It was like a watch out yell. Two syllables. It was probably in the bushes, less than 20 feet away. My grandmother's farm was very close to the Gasconid near competition. As kids, we spent summers with her and played in the woods. We would find lean-tos built in the woods, large areas of tall grass flattened, and holes dug into the side of mountains. If we asked them, my grandmother would say it was from the storm or some animal. She had property across the road, some fields, and a farm where no one lived. They just used it for growing crops. Her property across the road was deeply wooded and had some bottomland next to a stream. She forbid us to ever go on the property with adults along. She never said why. My grandmother wasn't afraid of anything. She spent most of her life living alone on a farm after her kids were gone. She didn't hunt, but she did keep a rifle by each of her second story windows, loaded. I remember overhearing my dad and his brother talking about how she almost shot at something out of her second story window that came up from the bottom area. They never spoke about it again. I have one of those rifles. It was what I asked for when she passed away. I cherish it. I don't know what she shot at, but I know what my dad and uncle's faces looked like when I overheard them. Shock. They were both World War II Marines in the South Pacific. I'm sure you know the general area I'm describing. We went to Mountain Grove occasionally from her house. I'm 51, and the first time I saw one, was I was four years old. I was white-haired, very tan, beach kid off the Gulf Coast a little ways up from Houston, Texas. He was watching me through the window at night. I've been scratched, and I would hide under my mom and dad's bed at night. My last encounter was with my ex-girlfriend. Cancer has me on a short to-do list, so after all the bad dream from my ex about this subject, unbeknownst to her, I escorted her out of a rock hounding adventure, only to be introduced to a family of five that has been around the area that I've been camping. My wife and I were sitting in a 15-foot double ladder stand on 300-plus acres deer hunting in the middle of Tennessee on the Alabama border. It had a rock thrown from behind us over our heads and approximately 40 yards into the field we were watching. I glassed the entire hardwood ridge behind us, probably 30 minutes, nothing, no movement, no sounds at all. There is a place, as kids, we went and jumped off waterfalls. It was in the woods, and along the way, if you went off trail, there was an old settler's community, possibly a fur camp. Along the way to the waterfalls, you would see things out of the corner of your eyes. All of us had the same experience multiple times and would quickly move our heads back and forth. We always called it the haunted forest or the ghost of the forest. As a young adult, this ended up being the same area, five to six mile diameter, that I went camping and had many occurrences in, the ghosts of the forest. 
I was with a friend and we saw a gigantic UFO, probably several hundred feet tall light sculpture. It was slender and just above the ground, right on the Scottsdale County Country Golf Club and right next to Scottsdale Road. I felt a kind of mind-numbing taking place as we attempted to approach it. Here's my point. I asked my friend, are you seeing this? And what do you see? Three times I asked my friend that, each time saying it louder. He never responded. We left the area as I believe we were told to, and the mind managed. Later, he said, you manifest this crap. It was probably just a helicopter with a bright light. I was speechless considering what we saw. He was dumbed down fully. I still can't shake down this encounter. The light and Mansing didn't seem to cast much light considering how bright it was. You had to look away after looking right at it because the light seemed to drip and it moved as you tried to see what it was. It was cloaked in light or it was light. I really couldn't tell. It felt like it should have been happening in ancient Egypt because when you're trying to depict it, it was a religious experience, so to speak. The supernatural is real. Everyone always talks about encounters with creatures in the woods, but imagine seeing a shape-shifting alien in the middle of a large, busy city during rush hour traffic. You're probably wondering how that's even possible. So I'll tell you what happened to me in April of 2000. It was 22 years ago in Fresno, California during a bright, sunny day. My friend picked me up in her car. I think we were going over her house, but I really don't remember because of what happened next. I was sitting in the passenger's front seat. We were slowing down to a stop at a red light. There were cars to the right, and me, whose driver was already stopped. As my friend slowly pulled up to the car to the right, the driver of the car slowly turned her head to look at me. When she fully turned her head to my direction, she smirked and kind of made the Mona Lisa smile, and then her whole head and face, all of it turned into a reptile face and head. It looked like a lizard with various shades of brown, burgundy red color, and a little of tan and creamy colored mixed in. It looked exactly like camo colored lizard head. Then the face shifted back into a human face. The human woman's face was medium skin tone, black woman. I couldn't believe what I had just seen and just stared out the window, lost in disbelief. My friend had no idea this even happened because she was looking forward since she was driving. The light turned green and the alien woman just drove off. The way she smirked at me was like, yeah, I know you see me. What you gonna do about it? I didn't say a word to my friend. I never told anyone until about five or six years ago. Have heard of people being killed or injured by Sabe. The people or persons were the aggressors. Firing a gun at Sabe out of fear, etc. There was an encounter of three teenagers hunting on one of the teenagers' family property. They ran into a group of Sabe and two of the teenagers shot at them. The two that shot at the Sabe had their heads ripped off. The remaining teenagers was never the same. I lived in an area where Sabe lived in Rome for about four or five years. I never felt threatened. I was also very respectful of them and never tried to record or follow them. Never shot a gun at them. Residing in Maryland, only 40 or so minutes from Washington, D.C., a county I used to live in for 13 years has public hunting land available in one area, 6,000 acres. The other I hunted along the Potomac had several thousand acres as well. Came across food caching. Both had deer's heads ripped off. One had been shot by me and my older brother. We were unable to locate the deer. I found this one seven days later, stuffed under a tree cavity with leaves over it. The other, 
a deer I had not shot, but was also found in some similar situation. But this tree had been cut, and the root ball opened to a point that it was about four or so feet deep, and somewhat the same size as the one I found that my brother had shot nine or so years before. Outskirts of Kansas City, Missouri, Nolan Road, 1967 or 68. A man was killed by an eight foot tall hairy creature. He never made it back to the car. His girlfriend was in the car when a deputy pulled over to see what was going on. He was next to their car and she started pointing behind him. He emptied his service revolver as it was coming towards him. The lady unlocked the door and the deputy climbed in and drove her car with a flat tire to Independence, Missouri Police Station. They tracked it and killed it. It had a muzzle shorter and a thicker than a bear's, only four toes and fingers with claws, not bulky like a sabe, bear people, or the dog man. I'm native and these beings do exist. I have family that have seen them. My cousin's daughter even took a pic of a young one in the open while she and her friend were walking home on a path from the beach. Seen the pics and yup, standing there is a copper colored young Bigfoot about four to five feet tall and it looked thick, if that makes sense. As usual, the pic is a little blurry, but they also took pics of the footprints and those were clear as day. You can even see the skin pattern on the toes, like a fingerprint. Also have two buddies that seen a little person about a foot tall while they were wood cutting and the little fella wasn't pleased with them wood cutting in the area. They immediately left and never went back to that area again. My late pops told me what my grandfather had told him. When the end is near, strange creatures will start to come out and be seen by many people. I have many strange stories that my late father told me even told me about his UFO experience and the craft got so close to him. He said there were windows. All I had to do was tiptoe to see inside, but he decided not to look into the craft. I know many creatures exist and they always have. Just another day in our blue and green planet. There is a place we go hunting to. We do not usually camp in that area as it has bad energy. My husband was whale hunting in that area with two friends. It was too late to go home, so they decided to brave it out and pitch up a tent for the night. When they fell asleep, my husband woke up to someone walking around the tent in circles. It had traditional boots on, kamek, we call them. It would stop in front and then start walking again. We are to put a knife sharp side out in the front of the entrance in the tent in that area. They were too tired and forgot. They were being bothered by entities the whole night until daybreak. Alligators. A young woman in town married a man from another part of the country. He was a nice fellow and they got along pretty well together. There was only one problem. Every night he'd go swimming in the river. Sometimes he'd be gone all night long and she'd complain about how lonely she was. This couple had two sons. As soon as the boys could walk, their father began to teach them how to swim. And when they got to be old enough, he took them swimming in the river at night. Often, they would stay there all night long. The young woman would stay home all by herself. After a while, she began to act in a strange way. At least, that's what the neighbors said. She told them that her husband was turning into an alligator and that he was trying to turn the boys into alligators. Everybody told her there was nothing wrong with a man taking his son swimming. That was a natural thing to do. And when it came to alligators, there just weren't any nearby. Everybody knew that. Early one morning, the young woman came running into town from the direction of the river. She was soaking wet. She said a big alligator and two little alligators had pulled her in and had tried to get her to eat a raw fish. They were her husband and her sons, she said. They wanted her to live with them, but she had gone away. Her doctor decided she had lost her mind 
and he had her put in a hospital for a while. After that, nobody saw her husband and boys again. They just disappeared. But now and then, a fisherman would tell us about seeing alligators in the river at night. Usually it was one big alligator and two small ones, but people said they were just making it up. Everybody knows there aren't any alligators around here. I'm Connor from Bigfoot Anon, and I'm always on the hunt for the next big adventure. When you're on the trail for long hours, you build up quite the stench, enough to drive any skunk ape or yeti away. <laughs> Luckily, I'm on the quest now for the solution to all my problems. Yeti bars. They do exist. Available in tons of different scents and fragrances. Check out yetibars.net for more and use my code BA10 for a special offer. Clean like a beast. Yeti Bars! Oh.